Hey guys, I'm Nemo and we are here in the Magic the Gathering Jules the Planeswalkers 2013 campaign. And we are at the last, the final stop of our journey. It has been a long while, we have entered some kind of shadow realm where only one last enemy remains. We have come all this way for the gods and the glory, the power the honor to slay ourselves a dragon. I call Boles. Well, hopefully we can beat him in one go. I hope so. So let's find out. <laughs> um, oh, wow, are you serious? Creature size 5 stars, deck speed 5 stars, deck flexibility 5 stars, card synergy 5 stars. So basically his deck is amazing <laughs> and he's gonna cheat. Um, well, I landed on Crosswind, so we're gonna try it with Crosswind. Well, this could be a good one to use if I can counterspell. I mean, his, de his, his cards may be great and amazing, but if I can counterspell them, then just like any enemy, he will fail, right? That's hopefully what's gonna happen. <laughs> I have no idea what he does. Right, Mastermind Emperor, Ancient One. Aged over 20,000, 60 feet long and wide. 60 tons, style of magic, master of blue, black and red mana, favorite creatures none, any that exploit the foe's weakness, favorite spells, mind attacks and murder sorcery, unusual, curved horns, unusual for a dragon, between the horns floating, floats an ovoid object of mysterious origin. Nicol Boles is among the oldest and most evil beings in the multiverse. He has lived for over 20 millennia and has survived countless cataclysms. Nicol Boles once had immeasurable, immeasurable power and has a grand scheme for reacquiring his godhood. Quote, the finest pawns are those with pawns of their own. Allies Sarkhan Vol, Tesseret. Sarkhanvol was driven mad and became a servant of Nicol Boles. Enemies Ajani Goldmane, Associates Liliana Vess, Chase Valera. Nicol Boles seems to have special plans for Chase and, and made a deal with Liliana that involved manipulating the Mind Mage. Hmm, interesting. Alright, well, let's get into it. I think we've done enough reading, let's do some battling. Go. I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to see an animation of this one. I really was expecting that, but... Uh, well, we have a Mana Leak, we have a Twin Cast and a Repulse. This is gonna set us up nicely for the first few turns. Probably gonna subvert whatever he tries to do, hopefully. But who knows, really. He could have Endless Mana or something, in which case Mana Leak doesn't do much. Well, if he has a, a really good spell, then Twin Cast is great. So I'll, I guess I'll try this, really. Um, I have no idea what to expect, which makes this kind of difficult, since I haven't seen his deck before. So yeah. Well, turn one he plays an island, and I play an island, so... Alright, so far so good. <laughs> There's a mountain, alright. Island and mountain. And then, what's this? Augur of Boles, two cast, one free, enter the battlefield, look at the top three cards, may reveal an instant of sorcery cards from among them and put it into your hand. That's nice. Okay. So, he's... What was that? Okay. There... Whoa! Cruel ultimatum. Whoa! Target opponent sacrifices a creature, discards three cards, then loses five life. You return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand, draw three cards, then gain five life. There is always a greater power. Okay, so if he's gonna have the mana to cast this, then he pretty much wins in the game, I guess. Wow. Sacrifices a creature, discards three cards, then loses five life. You return creature card from graveyard to your hand, draw three cards, then gain. Yeah, that pretty much wins him. I don't even need to know what it does because if he ever casts that, then, then I pretty much lose. So. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> wow. 
that was a big card, so that's a sign of things to come, I guess. Um, he has all three of his mana, so... And... What's this? Oh, it's a Mox. Zephyr. Well, I could mana leak that, then just paste the three mana. Um, I don't know if I want to mana leak that even, but it is really good though. Now what's this? Gem of Becoming, free cost, free sacrifice. Search your library for an island card, a swamp card and a mountain card. Reveal those cards and put them into your hand and shuffle your library. That seems too good for him. Like, if I can stop him from even getting there at all, then that should be good. So I... Yeah, I'll mind leave this. I have no idea. Um, the thing is, I expect there to be a bunch of really good stuff. Wow, and I get rewarded by drawing another mana leak, that's really good for me. But like I said, I expect him to have a bunch of really good stuff uh, that once he hits the late game, that it's gonna be really difficult to win. Um, so I basically have to stop him from doing that until I can get infinite turns or whatever. Um, yeah, so this is... I may, I may be a deck that wants to get to the late game as well, but... Yeah, I can play Azure Mage, because I still have mana open for Mana Leak or Queen Cast, whichever one I want, so... Um, I'll play it. Um, I won't be able to stop his Augur from attacking though. Oh, he's... Should I... Should I... Twin Cast the Lightning Bolt and kill his guy as well? seems like a bad idea because I don't know what he has for mana but it's probably gonna be better than lightning bolt so I'll let it go um, it's sad but I really have to play control here and oh he did it at the end of my turn as well so that's really smart of him because if I would have counterspelled that then he could have played something for six mana here like um, well, not the Cruel Ultimatum, that's 7 mana actually. Compulsive Research, okay, you can do that. You can do that. Maybe I could have Twin Casted that, but I don't know. Um, right now though, I don't know that I have nothing to do. Oh, this is the card, I, new card I unlocked. <laughs> I should take this out of the deck, but um, Day of the Dragon, 7, yeah, seven cost. When enters the battlefield, exile all creatures you control and put that many 5-5 five, five red dragon creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. When Day of the Dragons leaves the battlefield, sacrifice all dragons you control, then return the exiled cards to the battlefield on your control. Actually, this might be a good card in this deck, I don't know. Um, it could be the last remaining win condition that I was really looking forward to, but uh, this time I do have mana enough for a repulse in a mana leak or a twin cast in a mana leak, so you know, um, it's looking better this turn, but he also has 7 mana now. What's this? Mind Claw Shaman, when it ends the battlefield target up and reveals his or her hand, you may cast an instant or sorcery card from it without paying its mana cost. Yeah, so then he plays my mana leak, and I can't... Shit. So I have to mana leak this, because I might as well. Um, because he could just ruin me anyways um, okay but I can still at least twin cast this cruel ultimatum you know so that he's not the only one who gets to get advantage of it although his cruel ultimatum goes off last which means which is probably bad for me I don't uh, man maybe I should have remembered what it exactly he did but if he does it then we'll see it you know I don't have any creatures on the field right now and this doesn't turn creatures I play into dragons so there's no point casting it right now so I guess I'm casting favorable wins and then I still have the mana for repulse and twin cast or repulse draw a mana leak no there's only two in the deck so actually that that won't be possible at all um, although I could have grabbed a cancel if I didn't what's this Igneous Pouncer, 6 cost, 5 1, Swamp Cycling, Mountain Cycling, okay, he didn't do that, but it has a haste. A haste 5 1, that's not too too good. Um, 
that's okay. Not too worried about that, really. Um, I can repulse it, and I probably will. And in fact, well, I could repulse both, but I don't really want this guy to hit the battlefield again, so it's not gonna do much. So I guess I keep my twin cast for whenever he plays something good. So I'll repulse this guy, draw another card, hopefully something more useful to me. Right of Replication? Hmm, that's interesting. Right of Replication and Twin Cast in hand? If I somehow get a lot of mana here, then weird things may happen. Um, I want this, please. I could Twin Cast that. But he has that cruel ultimatum in hand, which would probably wreck me there. Now I only get rid of one creature, um, but I get rid of everything else in my hand. Do I, do I want to do that? I could, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top three cards of your library in more reveal. Bottom of your library in any order. So what I could do is just write a replication that thing. I think I will, because I might get something really good. I could twin cast it, but I don't think I want to because I want to keep the twin cast ready. Uh, okay, this is apparently the only card I could have chosen from, so I'll keep that. Which is really nice for me, uh, having a cancel already for his cruel ultimatum, whenever he plays it. And I will have... 4, 7... There it is, so he's gonna cruel ultimatum here. I'm gonna twin, twin cast it, but let's see what it does exactly. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. Okay, so he sacrifices a creature, discards three cards, loses five lives. Right. Then I return a creature card from my graveyard to my hand, draw three cards and gain five lives, and then it goes the opposite. Uh, okay, so I get to draw first and then discard. So this is better for me than this is gonna be for him. So that's good because he has to discard and then draw. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, that was the only creature in my graveyard, of course. And I'll get rid of this auger. And now I have to discard stuff. I'll get rid of Azure Mage. Uh, Day of the Dragons is good. I don't know. I don't know. I think I might want to get rid of Rite of Replication because it's going to be really expensive. And I still have to cancel. Although I could write a replication one of his guys. Um, these guys are going to deal 6 per turn, so I got him on a 3 turn clock and then I have cancel in hand. Might be good enough, although if I attack for 6 one turn, um, I could have him on a 2 turn clock. Hmm. So what I think I'm going to do is this. I don't, don't particular need right of replication. Okay, so <clears throat> now we have Torrent's Invocation that we can play and I'm gonna have two free freeze. I'm gonna have mana open for cancel. He has four cards in hand. I don't know what it is but I probably need to cancel them. Um, five cards in hand now and he has plen plenty of mana to play whatever he wants. So hopefully he plays one big spell. That is fine. You can play that. I don't mind. But he's at 20 life as well now, okay. But I do have a 2 turn block on him. I could block here, but I won't. So many cards in hand though, so... My strategy is dangerous. What's this? Disciple of Boles, enter the battlefield, sacrifice another creature, you gain X life and draw X cards. Yeah, no way. Hell no. You're not gaining 5 life and drawing 5 cards, Nicole. So now all I have is Day of Dragons. Another one of these. That could be good, could be bad. If he has another one of these, then he could kill me, you know, before I kill him. So maybe I play this, but no, I want to have him on a two turn clock. Um, oh shit, I think they, don't, they get summoning sickness though. That's stupid. Yes, oh, I, I should have thought of that. Okay, so the 6-6 six is actually because they do get boosted by favorable wins as well, but I'm nothing to stop him from doing whatever he wants. I should have decked for 6 and then done it. Oh man, so what's this? 
I, mean, I have to read all his cards. Two four with fear. Okay, he doesn't do. He doesn't cycle them. Um, so that's interesting. I think he could. What this means is, if he cycles this card, puts it back in, then he can grab two islands or two swamps, whatever he chooses. So, but he doesn't need that because he doesn't. Okay, so he kills one of my dudes or steals it. What is this? Slave of Bolas. Gain control on tap. Gains haste. Sacrifice at the beginning of next end step. Oh shit. I need to block here. Take 5 damage. Go to 4. But this kills his guy. What? Oh, sacrifice at the beginning of next end step. Okay. Luckily, though, he has 0 cards in hand. And I can attack him for 6, and I can play the other invocation. So. It seems like I'm winning here, and as long as he just doesn't grab something else that is completely ridiculous and wins in the game, and I should be fine. So, but these are just gonna be normal drakes and not dragons, because I, the day of the dragons only turns creatures into dragons when it comes into play. Yeah. So my mistake with not knowing that they had something. Really, I should have known. He plays a land. That's good for me. Really, I should have known. Oh, but it has fear, so it can just attack me. Oh shit, he has 14 life. Uh, I need bounce or something. Um, shit. So he defeats me at 2 life. Really? Wait a sec. Yeah. I don't have artifact creatures or black creatures. Shit. Nicol Bolas, you bastard. I I can't I can't win here. A stupid 2-4 kills me. Unbelievable. Wow. Well we're gonna see it happen then, I guess. Dang it. <laughs> well, epic match, epic match. Um Well done, Nicole. Well done. You are a mastermind of epic proportions, I must say. I tip my head. What is that? Oh, it's a Mox Jet. Oh, it looks so weird. Wow. Okay, so this is what a Mox Jet looks like in this game. Okay. <laughs> Apparently. Alrighty. So that's really an, um, an artifact as well as a land. So, uh, yeah. That's what it is. It doesn't even say artifact land. Um, well, it, it isn't really a land, though. That's the thing. Like, um, it costs zero and it's an artifact that can tap for black mana um, so basically you can play a land and play a mox jet or you play about five mox jets and land in one turn because uh, the restriction of playing only one land a turn doesn't count for mox jets so that's why they're overpowered and these are cards that are no longer legal but in his deck he uses them he cheats <laughs> He's the end boss, so what do you expect? 4 plus 5 is 9. Uh, actually, yeah, that, that would work. And I'd have him in 2 turns. Oh well, never mind, because he kills all my guys with Pyroblade. 2 damage to each. And now I get my mana leak, which is a turn to lay. Yay. Uh, so now all I have is stuff to deal with him. And no longer I uh, presence on the board. What's this? Demonic Tutor, search your library for a card and put the card into your hand and shuffle your library. Should I mana leak that or should I mana leak whatever he gets? But whatever he gets could be cheap enough that he could get me with it. So I guess I just mana leak the tutor. I'm sure that whatever he gets is gonna be is gonna be game winning for him. If he kills the Azure Mage then I can bounce it if I want to. See, like right here. Now I could bounce my Azure Mage to my hand, or I could just draw a card. And really, I kind of just want to draw a card. But given the amount of card advantage that he has, maybe card advantage is really what I need, though. So, I could just disperse it and try again next turn. Is that gonna be fast enough? Who knows? Hopefully. 
Um, if I can get this set up then it's gonna be good. But, I don't know, I have to choose for going for speed and going for s slowness with this deck. Uh, going for, I mean, steady, uh, good card advantage, then I have to go for card advantage, because that's the big advantage that, sh that this deck has. That's really what this deck aims to do. But he discards my... Look at this. Brain Bite. Forecast, target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a card, that player discards the card. Draw a card. So, he still gets rid of my Azure Mage anyway, so I guess... It didn't really matter this way, although, yeah it did, it did, I mean, if I had drawn a card then I would have still had my Disperse at least. So apparently this was the wrong thing to do and now I have to just Distortion Strike again. Oh man. Uh, with six cards in his hand and two cards in my hand, I don't really see a possibility to win this game, unless all his cards are... Really look at this, Cruel Ultimatum. Wow, luckily he only has two cards left over, so I can mana leak it. Wow, if he waited a turn I would be so screwed. Although maybe he has another one and he doesn't care. Yeah, he, he draws even more cards. Plays the Mox Ruby as well. Nice art. And discards one card. There's a cancel, so yay. Okay. I'm assuming that with so many cards in hand, he has something big either way, so... I didn't see that. Let me see that again. Slave of Balaz. So that pretty much steals one of my dudes and kills it at the end of turn. And he has four power on board. Huh. Wow. This is really a difficult matchup. <laughs> difficult. Difficult to beat Nicol Bolas here. What a cheater. Okay. Um, I can get this purse. I can get Torrens Invocation. And then die from the one creature I can't block. <laughs> I could get Slide of Hand and hope to get something that does save me even though I have no idea what it is so let's try that uh, something for six mana that can save me here uh, time warp would have I guess uh, man. so he kills me yay <laughs> end of story oh man oh man There we go. Well, Nicole, um, this video might become a two-parter, but I'm gonna try again. However, this time, I'm gonna go to the campaign ladder and choose a different, randomly still, but choose a different deck to try and beat him with. So, let's see that, and then... <laughs> uh, I have no idea what deck would be used, though. Not a clue, but we'll hopefully find out. And ready, go. Celestial Light. That might work, actually. That that might work. He only has one of each color, and I can get two cats into play. That's actually not that bad. Um, wow. I'll probably do that at end step, because then I can, if I draw land, can play Celestial Mantle, Mantle on one of these cat tokens. Could have responses. Hopefully he doesn't. There we go. Really? Really, really? Because I'm gonna I'm about to double my life if that hits. And then I'll have enough to win if he doesn't kill Felidar Suffer. So that's pretty exciting. Oh, this would be such a cop out though if I won with the life gain deck, wouldn't it? <laughs> Kinda feel bad if I do. Um I'm thinking what could I mean cruel ultimatum doesn't help him here. Okay, let's go for it, because I win at upkeep, and this way I win from him, or I win from him, and he has to deal with both, you know, he's at 4 life, so... What is this? Slave of Boles. Sacrifice, okay, so he's gonna gain 4 life, 
dang, he even survives this, that's really annoying. Wow, that's, wow, that's impressive, really. Um, <laughs> so he goes to 2 next turn, he gains 4 life, then this thing dies, so he pretty much deals with both, with one card. Quite impressive, now he still has 6 cards left to deal with this next turn. Um, so I'm far from in the home stretch really, but I take him to 2 at least, instead of 1, so that's something. Eh, eh, hopefully. <laughs> Um, wow, this is quite an epic battle, I must say, but, uh, eh, I don't know, I mean, it all really depends on what he has in hand, oh, and given that it's a computer, he might just cheat and have something in hand that is, he's just gonna sack this dude and gain two life, go to four, no, sacrifice another creature, okay, okay so I can take him to one. I can take him to one. Let's go for it! <laughs> I'm taking Nicole Boles to one. Uh, but I have 179 life, so it's if he's gonna kill me then it's gonna take a while. He's at seven lands now, what's this? Oh! Okay, well that's enough blockers, yeah, well done. Unbelievable, he actually managed to stabilize. Well, it's not so much unbelievable. It was really more unbelievable if I was gonna win that easily. Is he gonna just sacrifice? Yeah, he is. Wow. Oh, he's just gonna do that on him. And then I have to pretty much block it or he doubles his life. No, wait, no. Um, I'll chastise it. It's gonna die anyway. Um, do I take 2 damage here or do I chastise that as well? Because then that gets rid of another one of his blockers. So I, I mean it's not the best way of using your removal but I've been waiting for him to start attacking me and he just didn't. You know and now I have a chance to kill those guys so I will. Um, if he was still at 1 life then I would now have lethal but he's not still at 1 life. So I don't. <laughs> I had Celestial Mantle and I didn't win with that. I had Valorar Sovereign, didn't win with that. And even Sarah Ascendant. And there's Cruel Ultimatum, but I don't have any cards in hand. So... Oh wow, he, he gets back his Grave Titan though. Oh man, and Cruel Ultimatum again. Uh, and the fact that I know he has another one means that even if I deal with his Grave Titan, I will still probably lose to it. What can I even draw here though? What can I even draw here? Something... Well... I need to draw two things in a row, because he still has the Cruel Ultimatum, so even if I get something with flying that can kill him, that can fly over the head of his Grave Titan and all, then he can still Cruel Ultimatum it. So I need to get something else as well. This is gonna get him the card he wants. Unbelievable. Body Tutor as well. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. I just get land. Yay. Um, I guess I'll play it because he has Cruel Ultimatum, so uh, this way I don't discard it. Uh, there's nothing in my deck that is that costs 11 to play. Um, okay guys, I think... Yeah, this, this is just gonna take ages, but given the state of the board, I'm gonna say that there's no way for me to win. And I'm gonna go to conceal this duel and try another deck. We don't want to see this life gain deck again, do we? So let's try something else. Oh well. It was a nice try. Almost had him. Again. <laughs> and... Oh, this could work with all the exile. Yeah, this could work. Peacekeepers. Let's go. Um, yeah, so we're just randomly going for decks. I don't want to pick a deck that is good matchup against uh, Nicol Boles or something stupid like that and win that way. I don't want to be, want it to be a cop-out 
if I win. So I have Oblivion Ring, two Captain Skulls, I'm gonna take it. Fiend Hunter and Oblivion Ring would have been nice, or just a free one flyer that uh, does the exile thing, I uh, blink. But I mean, I have one answer in hand, and sometimes you don't even have one answer, and that's an unblockable for him, which is good. As we saw last game, unblockables are very good here. <laughs> um, having a bunch of creatures out does help against stuff like Cruel Ultimate. So, that's nice. Another Oblivion Ring, also very nice. I'll attack first before playing my Captain. Oh, uh, Captain. My Crusader of Odric. I was uh, gonna call this a Captain of the Watch. I don't know. Um, the target player sacrifices a creature, okay. I should have known, but he would have just played this in response to Crusader of Adric anyway. Uh, I do need a land to be able to play my uh, Captain Skull, but if I get it then Crusader of Adric will be at least a little bit bigger, although I may need to Oblivion Ring something here. He's just, he's just searching for the right cards at this point. That card is pretty good in his deck, I have to say. But uh, having a bunch of tokens out might might be a very good strategy against his deck. With um, as much blockers as he gets and the cruel ultimatums and uh, all that. Maybe just having a bunch of tokens might be hard for him to deal with from what we've seen so far. But of course there may be other cards that are equipped to deal with this. Like Pyroclasm. Wow. Of course he did that before so I should have known. <laughs> Uh, well, I have three, three more dudes, bro. Broski. Um, it does seem like Nico Boles likes to cheat and get the exact cards he needs. Because his deck may be amazing, but he also really has the cards he needs every single time. But, uh, although, I have to admit, with so many cards in hand, it's very likely. And he gets rid of one of my O-rings before I can even use it. You annoying bastard. Let me at least use my answers against your dudes before you discard them. That's that's so sad, really. I know that all of his discard is targeted, so there's no point in keeping my land so he doesn't discard my O-ring. Because he can just choose a card from my hand if he's gonna discard me, so... Okay, gets three more lands next turn, unless he has a Mox. And another Pyroclasm, of course, of course, should have known. Well, I can Oblivion Ring, the gem of becoming. Do I want to? Do I care about him getting that much land? These are the kind of things I need to worry about. And I have a 13 turn clock here if he plays a creature. Well, at least, I mean, given the fact that this thing can exile a creature, I may just, just do it. Who knows? There we go. <laughs> I really have no idea how to combat this deck. I mean, it's it's quite unfair. Quite, quite unfair. And I guess it's really just luck. I need to be very, very lucky to be able to beat this. There's a Tended Knight. It's kind of nice for me. But uh, he'll probably have another Pyroclasm or what have you. <laughs> I mean, Fiend Hunter is nice against like against um, Grave Titan if he plays that again. But he probably just kills my Fiend Hunter. Then he has Terminates in his deck as well, so he does have target removal, not just stuff like target player chooses a creature to sacrifice. So I won't expect my Fiend Hunter to survive very long. Um, do I really expect him to have more than two Pyroclasms in the deck? Maybe. Do I expect him to draw all of them if he does? Maybe. But I am gonna play my Raise the Alarm regardless. But I am gonna do it at the end step of his turn. So at least I get to attack with them. What's this again? You may cast an instant or sorcery card from it without paying its mana cost. Yeah, not gonna happen, Broski. I'll just play it myself. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have played my uh, 
raised the alarm for me and would not have been nice. So I would have fiend hunter this dude just so I can attack with all these 1-1s. One but instead I will just play glorious anthem. That works. Actually wait a sec, wait a sec. 5? Oh, are you serious? I would be 1 damage short. I would be 1 damage short if I, uh, ex if I also played fiend hunter then I would take him the 1. Let's not take him the 1 again, no. This time though it does make sense not to do it as well. Because I still want to keep this, uh, this spell ready. Just to deal with whatever he, he can play. Another Pyroplasm would suck. Which would be all I've left. Okay, he's gonna play that guy. That doesn't help him. At all. Does he have a spell for one black? That can do, do something here. I don't expect him to. So I think we finally have him. So yeah, other X deck. Yay! <laughs> uh, I would take him to zero life. Well, actually, yeah, I will. I really don't expect him. Oh man, it's gonna be so stupid if he if if he does have something though. But I'm gonna do it because that's the way cool kids do it. So let's take him to zero. Uh, I don't know what's in his deck. He could have something for bla one black, but he doesn't. Yay, and I will. <laughs> I would have felt really stupid if he had something, but um, I felt like I had to take him to zero after all this. That's your comeuppance, Nicol Bolas. We have completed the campaign, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let's uh, look at the campaign later, because this is not the end just yet. <laughs> and this should be... Wow, you have defeated the Planeswalker. The Dragon Planeswalker Nicol Bolas, in doing so you earned your chance to face a greater challenge at a special magic gathering event. Wizards.com slash greater challenge, okay. Unlock the revenge campaign. Yeah, because now we can do it all again and the opponents will have the decks fully unlocked and play more aggressively, better. So uh, look forward to that, but um, all of this has been, like I said, I record all of this in the first week or so, well, few weeks of the game being out and uh, by the time all of this is going to be out and about on the internet, it's going to be quite a while from there. So it's going to take a while for me to ever even get into the revenge campaign, since I don't need to. I have so many videos yet to upload of the campaign, but uh, uh, until then I'm just going to be doing a lot of online games. Maybe I'll do some plane chase, I don't know, I could do plane chase in between these campaign missions. That might be an idea. Well, you guys will know if I've done that, and otherwise um, I might do it in between the campaign and the revenge campaign. Uh, and the challenges as well, those are going to be on uh, Jules Community, so um, there's always a link to Jules Community in my videos, and uh, if you want to check that out, a lot of people from the, uh, well, a lot of YouTube people who make videos of this game are posting on uh, Jules Community because it is a community channel for this game. So um, there, if you want to find more people who do the same thing like me, then go ahead and check that out. Mostly we are focused on online games. Uh, this campaign was really kind of more of a let's play. I don't do this kind of thing often, but I plan on doing it more in the future maybe. I don't know really though. Um, it's going to depend on the popularity of this as well. But um, yeah, so you can you can check out more people doing the same kind of thing on Jules Community, and as well, I will be posting challenges on Jules Community. So a uh, little shout out there in case you guys are uh, wondering where to go next, where to check out more of this kind of stuff. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. My name has been Nemo. My name will still be Nemo next time, which um, for all intents and purposes is going to be on an online game uh, video. But uh, maybe if you don't check those out, then. Maybe the next time is going to be on Revenge, Plane Chase, or if, you, or if you go to Jules Community, it could be on a challenge. Guys, see you later. Peace out.